Serious what's a scary science fact that the public don't know anything about. I only recently learned that when you get sunburned, the burn isn't because of skin cell damage. The of radiation damages the DNA. Then the skin cells decide to expire and fall off, so that the damaged DNA doesn't produce cancer. I'll never be mad at my skin peeling again. That you should never use bleach to clean cat pee. The combination creates chlorine gas that is very toxic. The plague is still out there. The bubonic plague is endemic in many parts of the world, but cases are very rare, because we've got it pretty well handled. If there's a general breakdown in society like a nuclear war, super volcano eruption or asteroid impact, it's out there waiting to come back. Scientists don't know exactly how acetaminophen works to relieve pain and reduce fever. They have an idea but nothing for sure, but yet it's the most commonly used pain reliever in the world. Another Kirrington event. The original Kirrington event was in 1859, which was basically an intense geomagnetic storm that disrupted slash knocked out telegrams, because that's all the technology there was to disrupt back then. Nowadays we use electricity for virtually everything. If it hit now the effect would be like an amp, but globally, there'd be no functional technology that involved electrics. In essence, losing all electrics would in turn stop communications then logistics and then fundamental infrastructure like food distribution, healthcare and utilities, other than electricity. An asteroid passed the Earth in September, that was about 40, 90 meters in diameter, and we didn't see it until a day later, because it traveled towards us from the direction of the Sunday, it passed us at half the distance from the Earth to the Moon. At any given time the Earth can be hit with a gamma ray burst, we won't see it coming since it moves at the speed of light and all life apart from deep underground or deep in the ocean, will be wiped out in minutes, although unlikely it can happen at any time. I learned about ton 618 the other day, my facts here may be mildly incorrect, feel free to google, it's a black hole about 10.3 billion light years away, but we can still detect the massive amount of light bending around it, it's so large, they had to make a new category of black hole for it called ultramassive black holes, it's believed to be the largest thing in the universe, its diameter is 14 times the diameter of Neptune's orbit, so it could fit our entire solar system in it 14 times across, side to side, if the black hole replaced our sun, we would be deleted. If it replaced the black hole, that is currently at the center of the Milky Way, within 120 years the Milky Way would be deleted. This black hole doesn't swallow planets, it swallows entire galaxies. The idea of this thing freaks me out. If my college biology professor wasn't completely misinformed, most humans have some form of parasite living inside them, some variety of worm, etc. There are just creepy crawlers in our insides, and we might never notice them. The one that came closest to giving me nightmares was hookworms. Although the thought that you could have heartworms kind of messed with me, too. Evidently, they are not just for dogs. Approximately 60%, in some reports, of the world's population have the parasite Toxoplasma gondii in their brain. For a long time it's through to have been a benign presence. But recent statistical research shows that it may have an impact on things like levels of anger and rates of accidents. When Gondi eyes on rats it changes their behavior so that they find the smell of cat urine appealing. So they find cats and get eaten. In the gut of the cat the parasite can reproduce. The United States has lost and never recovered at least six nuclear devices. When the baby boomer generation fills the nursing homes there very likely won't be enough nursing staff to care for them as more and more nurses are leaving the profession. So many people will struggle with infertility. It's not talked about or really discussed in middle school or high school and health class. When it happens, it's such a shock to the families and they are completely unprepared. The numbers are going up as well. Statistical one quarter pregnancies end in miscarriage, which is pretty high but again, Miscarriage isn't discussed. We've scoured the ocean mostly clean of life, like, the major fisheries are down something like 80% from their peaks, and nobody is doing anything about it. We might be sitting on a ticking time bomb of mad cow disease, prion disease that was in tainted beef in the 90s, the most closely related prion disease, 
Kuro, has an average incubation period of several decades, like 30 years or so, so there's a theory that the people who died from mad cow disease in the 90s are actually only a very small fraction of the people who contracted it, technically called VCJD, if it's in humans, as they were just the people who the disease happened to progress very fast in. There may be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are going to start losing their sanity and dying as their brains rot from the inside in the next several years. There's also a pretty good chance this isn't true though and nothing will happen. A lot of scientists believe the incubation period is 10 years or less, as we haven't really seen growing numbers of ECJD deaths yet. Since we have no way of finding out, the test for VCJD is just looking at someone's brain to see if it's all messed up. All we can really do is just wait and see if something happens and try to prevent further spread. The longer nothing happens, the more probable it is that there's no issue. But that's why blood donors from Europe slash the UK were banned outright. If a bunch of people do have it, and donated blood things will be bad to say the least, although they'll already be bad when the UK life expectancy drops a decade. Primes are terrifying. They're basically zombies at a protein level. They're misshapen in such a way that causes them to misshape other proteins. Normal methods of disinfection don't work. This makes researching them a very tricky matter, as while most cases involve eating infected meat, Mishandling prion samples is all it takes. Tricky part is, there is no treatment either. Once they get in you, they are 100% fatal. It has been a while since I've studied them, so this picture may be incomplete, but I do know they are always fatal. Magnolia plants are so old that they predate the evolution of pollination by bees. They were pollinated by beetles. Saccadic masking. A mechanism's our eyes have that cuts off the processing of retinal images when it becomes blurred. Humans become effectively blind during a saccade. Neutrinos are a particle that has an extremely small chance of interacting with matter. Like if a rock was dropped randomly from space to the earth, the chance it would hit a specific target is similar to the chance it would interact with any matter. They have to build huge chambers deep in the earth and wait a while. To have the possibility to detect one from the countless that constantly zoom through the earth from the sunday if the sun were to go supernova it would create so many neutrinos that they would kill you assuming nothing else did reverting global warming does not unmelt the south pole antarctica is a giant ice mountain size of america plus canada average one kilometer thick on top of land that is studded by plates of ice in the sea Think of a very slow moving pudding held in place by a little edge. All the modeling suggests that once you lose those plates, eventually all the ice will slide into the water to refreeze the plates once they are gone. You need an ice age of about minus 2 Celsius to pre-industrial, or minus 3 Celsius to current. There is a 70 meter of sea level rise of ice on the South Pole. The models swing widely on how long it takes to melt on a bunch of factors, but it could be less than 2 centuries for the first 10 meter. So either we geoengineer to cool at least the South Pole by a tremendous amount or to hold the ice in place, or in time all coastal regions are lost. The plates are still in place, but the warmest one is showing signs of stress and thinning. It is linked to 7 meters of sea level rise. If it fails, to me this is more threatening than any other climate change catastrophe. All onions, all veggies and the allium family are toxic to dogs. Worst can scenario then can develop a hair autoimmune hemolytic anemia, whereas the body destroys its own red blood cells. This disease is about 80% fatal. My dog caught it. We are not sure from where, but his was a primary disease, not a result of a cancer. We think he was eating leeks out of the garden, took a week in the hospital, two blood transfusions, and about six months of meds to get him back. He started at 20 kilograms, and was down to 9 kilograms at the worst part of it. We still have no idea what consciousness is. Worse, we have not many ideas how to think about it. Just some philosophical ideas. Then it, Chalmers etc. I mean we don't know how to build interstellar ship, but we could write books and make movies about it. We could speculate about different approaches and ideas. For consciousness it's not true. We don't know why it exists. What is I? What is the role of consciousness? How it emerges? How to research it? And so on. Confined spaces, be very careful of confined spaces, 
it's not just the tightness of the space, but also the type of space, especially on old ships with a lot of rust. Opening up closed hatches and going into confined spaces can get you killed due to the lack of oxygen in those confined spaces. Others can also die from trying to rescue. Take things slow, evaluate your surroundings, and don't be afraid to ask for help if you are unsure. Coal plants release 500 times more radiation directly into the atmosphere than any nuclear fission plant ever could. A study by MIT in 1972 predicted that society will collapse one way or another during the 2040s. An economist in 2012 reviewed it, and he said we are right on track with their trajectory. They had many scenarios, but the one that is playing out is that pollution is making more and more land infertile which makes it harder to grow food. If the prediction pans out, eventually we won't have enough food to feed everybody, which will start a series of events that will lead to the collapse of society. The youngest persons who developed Alzheimer's were around 25 years old. One lady got diagnosed with it at 31 while pregnant, and by the way, when you get the disease at like 65, it didn't suddenly begin. It has been creeping up and ravaging your brain for at least 20 years, if not more. You just didn't realize it, because our brain is very good at compensating damages, until it cannot. Basically, the day you lose yourself in the supermarket, it's too late. Your brain is mostly mush and there is so far nothing you can do. That mean that, if you are 40 to 60 years old and reading this, chances are that some of you already started to experience the onset of Alzheimer's brain degeneration. It's just not advanced enough for you to realize it. Have a nice day.